So Dan, uh, what is fantasy exactly? So fantasy football basically is you draft a bunch of players from that are in the NFL and or from any sport really, and you you know draft them and then you play them every week. You change out your lineups, and you can usually do it with you know a group of friends, a group of coworkers. You can put a little money in the pool, like for a pool, and uh, basically the whole point is like to put in like different players to see how they're going to do each week. You know, in an, in in and out of every week, see if they're going to do well or not, and try to you know. Have them see how they're gonna do. Have them, you know, statistics and like how well they've done in the past. And then the other parts are kind of luck. You know, you kind of throw in a player like you don't know how he's gonna do. He could go off for like 30 points, or he could, you know, do nothing, go off for two points. Like it's basically, you know, we basically just doing a uh, simulated draft or simulated version of a real game with multiple players trying to, you know, win the most. Fantasy football made its start in 1962 at a hotel in New York City. Wilfred Winkenbach was the man who conceived the idea for fantasy football and who deserves the most credit for the birth of the game. He was a limited partner with the Raiders. He owned a financial stake in the team but had no say in its operation. Winkenbach devised and played precursor fantasy games involving golf and baseball in the 1950s that later provided the inspiration for fantasy football. Fantasy football was born in a room of the Manhattan Hotel, now the Milford Plaza, on 8th Avenue in New York during the Raiders 1962 East Coast Road Swing when Winkenbach met with two writers from the Oakland Tribune, Scotty Sterling and George Ross. He then threw out his idea for discussion. Over a few drinks, they created a scheme of organization and a set of rules by which sports fans could draft the skilled players from pro football teams onto their own imaginary teams and play weekly games against their friends in a league that rewarded the team with the best record. Before computers were invented, they had to manually draft players on paper and had to also manually take down each player's statistics during the game. The first scoring scheme they came up with was 50 points for a rushing touchdown, 25 points for a thrown or caught touchdown, 25 points for a field goal, 10 points for an extra point, and 200 points for a kick or interception return for a touchdown. The first league ever created was called Gopple, which was an acronym for the Greater Oakland Professional Pigskin Prediction League. I spoke to different fantasy participants about how they feel on the advancements. So Will, in the short time you've been playing fantasy, how have you seen it grow and advance? Well, throughout my few short years of playing fantasy, um, I started playing before FanDuel and DraftKings both came out, and with that, you've seen the job market grow like ex exponentially. Like, um, there, there's over millions of dollars being put on sports betting sites like these almost every single day, and they're giving out so much money. So not only has that increased the job market and our economy overall, it's just become so huge. Like, it's also given a lot of people like that don't enjoy sports a reason to get into sports because a lot of people don't like to follow a team specifically, but they like to follow the players, but they didn't have a reason to get into the sport. This really puts them behind it and really makes them really love it. Modern day fantasy sports have been revolutionized. There are now various platforms such as CBS, ESPN, and Yahoo where you can host your own fantasy football leagues for you and your friends. There are now segments on various sports shows just talking about fantasy football. They'll talk about who to pick and who to drop during the season and in current weeks as the season goes on. For example, The Fantasy Show with Matthew Berry on ESPN. And this is a guy who's tailor-made for Jay Cutler, for someone with Jay's arm who can actually throw the ball much better on the deep routes than Ryan Tannehill could. So I think it's just all adding up for Devontae. As long as he can stay healthy, which is, you know, you can say that about almost all right. players, but for Devontae it really applies. If he stays healthy, he could have one of those breakout years that fantasy owners would be happy with. Gambling is what drives fantasy football. Some leagues do cash prizes and some do incentives where last place has to do something embarrassing. In 2012, fantasy football took a new approach. DraftKings and FanDuel were created. DraftKings and FanDuel are the latest advancements in fantasy sports. 
You only have to play for one day or week instead of the traditional season-long commitment. It works the same as regular fantasy with points, but you are entered into a giant league of hundreds, sometimes thousands of people. Fantasy football has become so advanced with DraftKings and FanDuel that people will start to question, was this all legal? The lineup, you can win $1 billion because you don't just want to watch, you want to play. John Oliver, from last week tonight, had his own input on the controversy about daily fantasy sports. But daily fantasy is very different. With daily fantasy, you can go online, uh, typically pay an entry fee of anything from 25 cents to thousands of dollars, uh, pick a team for just a week or a day, and compete against total strangers. It's the same as season-long fantasy, the way a nice mug of tea is the same as a nice baggie of heroin. Now, <laughs> both give you a lovely warm feeling, one's a little more intense. There has been a lot of controversy over these daily fantasy sites because some say it's gambling and some say it's not. Should daily fantasy be legal? I think daily fantasy should be legal because it's a skill-based game and it's not really gambling because you are using skill for to actually win money. Do you feel like it's gambling? Is that what you do, do when you play fantasy sports? Do they have to pay sports? anything to play? <laughs> I think you have to pay. And do they win something? They do. That's gambling. So there's a lot of skill that goes into selecting your team. It's like you're the general manager of teams, uh, hence the term fantasy sports, is you get to kind of fantasy be the general manager and you're assembling a team. In October 2015, Attorney General Eric Schneiderman was able to write new rules for DraftKings in New York which stated that a 15% tax gross must be given to New York and no one under 18 was allowed to play. A bill passed by New York's lawmakers could change how daily fantasy sports sites like DraftKings and FanDuel operate across the country. Under those new rules, no one under 18 can play. All advertising must show the accurate odds of winning, and operators will have to pay a 15% tax on gross revenue made in New York. DraftKings is not the only site having legal issues. FanDuel, another daily fantasy site, is having the same kind of problems. Has there been a noticeable dent in customers because they fear that they are doing something illegal, even if they're not? There certainly was last year. You know, we had the headlines last year. A lot of people, you know, obviously in the states had exit. You know, they all left. But even outside those states, like suddenly people were like, you know, is this illegal? And so we had a lot of, you know, brand damage last year. During the football season of last year, DraftKings and FanDuel aired about every 90 seconds. It's been impossible to avoid those ads. A few months ago, the two main daily fantasy sites, DraftKings and FanDuel, were airing a national TV ad every 90 seconds. You only need to remind people of something that often if your target market is sports-loving goldfish. Do you believe that the advancements of fantasy sports are hurting or helping the game? I believe that fantasy football is hurting the game because you have a lot more people now who are kind of just following players and rooting for individual players instead of teams. And they then they tweet or post about at these players being pissed off, like, why don't you go off this week? And you know, that's nothing to do with the players. It's all about luck. It's how they perform it week in and week out. You know, they can't control how they get the ball or how they run the ball. You know, it's truly up to luck on their part, how they do each and every week. And, you know, a lot of these people are just following teams. Instead of, like, having, like, a bunch of Patriots fans or Jets fans or Giants fans, you know, fans are like, oh, I'm a big Odell Beckham fan. I'm a big Tom Brady fan. I'm a big... Terry Brown for him, instead of, you know, people who love their love their team and now loving individual players has helped them, uh, you know, they love individual players that they have on their fantasy team, and if they do well, then they do well in their league. Do you think DraftKings and FanDuel are gambling? You know, FanDuel and DraftKings, I believe it's gambling because you're throwing, you're putting in money into a website to buy these players and hoping they can perform well enough that they win you more than the, you bought them for. Instead of, you know, just playing just randomly for free, drafting players to have them do well week in and week out. And there's no money online involved. You're just throwing money in a random pool with coworkers or friends. When you start putting money online into like a website, you are busy saying that I'm putting my money out there and trying to gain a larger investment than what I put in. As the years go by, fantasy sports will continue to grow. We'll just have to wait and see what ideas come out next.
In the years to come, fantasy will continue to grow in advance. We'll just have to wait and see what new ideas come out within the next few years. It all began on a cold and soggy October night in 1962, when, despite howling winds and driving rain, one man would ignite a spark, a spark that would fuel the passions of millions of Americans for decades to come. That man was Bill.